Do not adjust your digital device. What you are about to see and hear may shock and appall you. Join our hosts as they encounter countless thrills, spills, chills, and hilarity as they explore the very weirdest in pop culture. The following media is so strange, so beyond the scope of what is normal, it will make you ask the question, why does this exist? Everybody and welcome to another episode of Why Does This Exist? I'm Chris. I'm Rob. And we've got an interesting show for you today. We're talking about a movie that was basically the director's la first and last real movie that was anything close to a blockbuster. It was um, it was his second movie, technically. His first was an independent movie. Uh, it stars Josh Peck from Drake and Josh and some other things he, that he did. Um, I'm not sure what else he did, actually. And then uh, this other guy, Brian Garrity, who's done other things. And Alice Eve, who has also been in other things. I don't know the name of the movies that they've all been in or whatever. I've seen them in stuff. Um, but, yeah, I couldn't tell you enough about him. This movie is called ATM. As in the the thing that you go to the bank to take out cash. An automatic teller machine. It, it's a horror movie. It's it's not scary. It's honestly pretty terrible. It's pretty stupid. And and in times unintentionally funny. Yeah, it's it's one of those this is it, it's it's not as bad as the room where like you're going to invite people over specifically to watch it. This is one of those movies where you're like, what the hell am I watching? And yeah. It's one of those it's... random ones where you see this and you're like, what the hell is Josh Peck doing in this? Yeah. And you watch it out of morbid curiosity and you're like, oh, Jesus. He must have really needed money or something. Yeah. It's, it's just yeah. stupid. It's a stupid movie. <laughs> it's very stupid. There's... There's nothing, there's no plot really, there's just... The plot is just awful, the dialogue is awful, like... It's just bad, but before we do that, let me just get into our little spiel that we have to do every week, because we need you to, t because we need you to learn about where else you can find us and all those other things, because we're trying to, we're trying to establish a cult here. We're, we're, <laughs> we're trying to, we're trying to make money off this, so we can't do that without informing you to inform all of your friends and or probably more likely people you just don't like that you just want them to that you want to give them like a good prank before you don't see them again for five years or ever you can help support us we're why does this exist we're a show about weird things in pop culture um that are past present and in the works so potentially future you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash why does this exist if you want to give us a little bit of extra money. Um, you could get a couple of extra bonuses. You could get some, you can unlock yourself some additional content that we've created specifically for you. Um, and we've also, uh, we've also got some really cool things in there. Like you can pick our show, you, like you can pick our show for us essentially. You can, you can come up with an idea and you could say, hey, I want you to talk about this thing. And we don't have a choice because you gave us the money. So isn't that cool? Um, you can also, there's also a bunch of other things. We'll give you a shout out and we'll like say, hi, you're really cool. You're our friend, but not really. And, you know, what have you. I'm really burying our audience here. Um, you can also give us a tip at why does this exist show at gmail.com. So you can let us know if there's anything interesting that you'd like us to maybe talk about, maybe not an episode, but just like, 
Hey, I was watching Robot Wars the other day, which actually might be a good topic for a show one day. Hey, I was watching Robot Wars. The show was cool, but what's the deal with the host's stupid friend's jacket? I don't really understand it. Why does he have that bad, like, ponytail? What's going on there? I don't know. <laughs> Why is he British? Or is he Australian? I honestly can't remember. I haven't seen the show in, like, God knows how long. Is it even the same host? I don't even know. Is it even on TV anymore? That's actually a very good question. I always wanted to enter one of those competitions, but I don't have the I don't have the know how to make those damn things. Nor do I have a garage anymore to, in which to make it. And I don't know if I and I don't I think I know people who could do it, but now I don't want to. <laughs> so, anyway, why does this exist? Show at gmail.com. You can also openly dislike and like our stuff and you can find out about anything else that we're doing you listen to this show in short bursts on youtube at why does this exist show on youtube um and you can also let us know how we're doing you could give us a big thumbs down you can give us a big thumbs up or you could just give us a comment and say my god these people are terrible why i want my time back go ahead do that hit the stupid bell Subscribe to us, like us, don't like us, we don't really care. You can also find us on social media on Twitter at WT, WDTE Pod. Why does this exist? Pod, WT, WDTE Pod. Or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Why Does This Exist Pod. Or you can find us on our website where you can listen to all of our shows that are neatly archived and you can read a couple of really cool articles by you. Rob, me, me, and this guy <laughs> Tony who does stuff for us, which is really cool and it's a really nice thing. But because we don't pay him, and we could pay him if you guys would help pay us so that we could pay him. So if you don't like us, you could help like Tony and give him some money because, well, gosh darn it, he's a nice freaking guy. Why does this exist? Show or why does this exist? Pod. I'm sorry. That's our show. That, that that's that's our website. I'm. I'm botching this whole intro. Botch! <laughs> Huge botch. You can also find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, Pandora, TuneIn, Alexa, iHeartRadio, Player FM, Listen Notes, and Stitcher. All right, you are now, that's our spiel. That's the news. You're the weather. You are about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Here is our goddamn show that we'll get on, and our two ragtag group of rogues are going to get, are going to be coming at you with this stuff. ATM with Josh Peck. God. Oh, well, before we before we start on the movie, I think we also should mention that uh, a really good comedian passed away last week. Yes, um, yes, we should. Uh, Norm Macdonald, who, if anybody doesn't know, um, you, he was on seen, SNL. Yes, if you've seen the SNL Weekend updates, or if you've ever seen the original Celebrity Jeopardy mm -hmm. with Burt Reynolds, he's Burt yeah. Reynolds. Better known as yeah. Ferguson in that, in that skit. Yes. And uh, he was fucking hilarious. He was a really funny comedian. His stand-up was gold. His He had his own talk show, which was, like, hilarious. It was, like, almost like a... It was, like, a satire talk show, though. I don't think it was, like, real half the time. I think most of it was just supposed to be satirical. But it was, it was hilarious. And he was, like, a master of, like, deadpan delivery and all yeah. his jokes. Completely deadpan. It was deadpan, it was all out of left field, it just seemed like he just wasn't paying attention to anything that was going on, but he said something that was exactly the right thing to say at the spur of the moment that made it hilarious. Like, yeah. it, was, it was just a very unique display of comedy. Um, he, um, he lost a long private battle with cancer. Um, yeah. I don't have to tell you, but cancer sucks. Um, yeah. It's not anything I would wish on my greatest enemy. Um, it's it's just a horrible, horrible thing. Yeah. Um, but he uh, he dealt with it privately. Only a handful of people actually knew. Um, yeah. And I, I gotta say, it was you know it was really it was really courageous of him to just do that and just not say anything, and nobody even knew. Yeah. And he just didn't care. He still did what he did. He said what he said. He didn't even have. Mm -hmm. I was listening to um, an old episode of uh, of uh, Mark Maron's podcast, um, WTF, 
that mm-hmm. he um every time somebody passes, he posts like whatever the most recent episode was where he talked to that person if he talked to them. And um yeah. this um this interview was from two thousand eleven that he posted. And it was just it was just so great. Um, yeah. he didn't like you know, he uh, he grew up in a small town in Canada on like a farm. He didn't his family didn't have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, Norm McDonald and he just kind of he just kind of found it by accident, really. Um, he didn't he didn't really have like I don't even know if he had completed high school, but he had a he had a very minimal education and he like just did the whole Canadian circuit really. When he was yeah. out and he like wound up on Roseanne and he ended up having like a, a huge career. Like yeah. all just on being this really unique guy. Now, one of the more recent things he had done was he was uh, the pigeon on Mike Tyson's Mysteries, which is on Adult Swim and is freaking hilarious. That would also be an interesting episode to do also. But uh-huh. Norm MacDonald, what a guy. I'm sorry that we're honoring your memory talking about ATM with Josh Beck. I wish we had something better planned out for you, but we don't. Yeah. Um, well, I think I think Norm MacDonald probably would deserve his own episode, so maybe we'll... Uh put that on on the list possibly i think you know his com- his comedy style was just it worked just so well you know it was just it was so deadpan and so uh dry and it just worked so and i don't know if anybody i i, I feel like it was one of those things where all that he could do i don't think that style would work with any other comedian no it was like his voice and his mannerisms it just worked perfectly with with the way he did it you know right and his timing was just yeah you know, like he really like let you, he really let it build without have without doing like he did most of his act was him was just waiting, mm-hmm. like it was just a big pause and you were waiting for him to say something because you knew that it was gonna be off color it was not gonna be appropriate but it was gonna be hilarious yeah and the timing and the cadence were going were, were what was gonna make it as funny as it was. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he'll, he'll be greatly missed. He was 61, I believe, which I didn't even know he was that old. Yeah. It, he did not look that old, but... We will miss him. Yeah. Anyway, sadly, we have to go on to a... Sh- this, see, that was not even the saddest news. The saddest news, now we have to talk about this pile of garbage known as ATM. This is terrible. Um, it's it's just <laughs> this is actually so I, worse. This is worse news. Yeah, this is worse news than than Norm Macdonald dying. Yeah, the this worst, is just just this being in existence is just already worse. I would imagine this is probably why Josh Peck doesn't really have you know hasn't really done anything you know I recently. I, yeah, I, I don't I don't know what else he's done. I actually I haven't watched it, but I think there's a video on YouTube of him and like um, Miranda. Cosgrove, I think, is her name. What the hell is her name? Yeah, yeah. Um, the one who was like, I no, was it I Carly or whatever? The other one who was on Drake and Josh and spin off. Yes, whatever. Um, uh, there's like a video of like them reviewing ATM. I haven't watched it, but I imagine they're both like, this is bad. Oh yeah. Like, what the hell was I doing? Well, he was getting a paycheck. So, <laughs> although the friggin' the budget for this movie was tiny. It was a $3 million budget, and it made less than a million dollars at the box office. So, I, I guess it's technically a hit. Well, no, it I made less know. than a million dollars. It, it, it way, made way less than, than what it was cost to make. That's still more money than I expected it to, it to make. Well, according to IMDb, it's opening weekend in the United States... Was only two thousand thirty four dollars, wow! In the U.S. and Canada, so about five people saw this movie when it came out in theaters. Oh, he's in episodes of How I Met Your Father, which I don't know what the hell that is. Oh, they're filming it. That's why I don't know what the hell this is. He's also doing yeah. little random robot it, chicken things. Um, he's doing something called Thirteen the Musical. He's playing a rabbi. Oh, he's doing things that. Uh, he also did like he was he had like a tiny role on Fuller House. He does like little things here and there. Um, 
Yeah, it seems like, I mean, he is working. It seems like he's been doing a lot more voice work. Holy crap, he was Casey Jones on, like, the TMN, like, one of the, like, the more recent Ninja Turtles series? Like the I think it was a video game. No, TV series. He was oh, the TV series also. Huh. Various credits. For 59 episodes on it. Well, oh, well, it was on Nickelodeon, so actually it kind of makes sense because if he was on Nickelodeon. Yeah, that does make sense. So Nickelodeon uses a lot of their old stars for stuff. With, was that the one with Rob Paulson? Yeah, it was. This actually is a really good show, this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I never finished it, but, like, Sean Astin is on that also. Really? Wow. Yeah, he's like, um, and um, so is Jason Biggs. I think Jason Biggs is... Um, Leonardo, uh, I think Sean Astin is Raphael, and Rob Paulson is um, uh, Donald Tello. Wow, that's uh, that's actually pretty crazy. Yeah, it's actually a really great show, and I think the guy who plays Beast Boy is Michelangelo. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's actually a very good show. Um, the there's another new one that they're doing now that I think Rob Paulson is directing, but um, it's a but I haven't watched that one. Um, but, th th yeah, all right. So Josh Peck's credits are actually, it seems like he's doing a lot more voice work, which, yeah, honestly, good for him. That's, it's a lot yeah. more fun anyway. Not big money, but it's steady steady work. I mean, the shows that he's doing are probably big money. Yeah, but I'm sure he's not getting, like, a gigantic, he's not getting Hollywood actor paycheck, but no. I mean, he's making a living, so it's fair. Yeah, he's, he's definitely making good money. Um, yeah, he just... He hasn't really done a whole lot of, like, film things, or it seems like... Well, I mean, he's doing filming... He's filming things now. It looks like... Yeah, and he was on, like, the Turner and Hooch thing, so it seems like this kind of, like... Made him have to kind of, like, lay low for a little bit, basically. Um, yeah. And after that, he was like, okay. Like, it seems like up until, like... Yeah, it seems like up until, like, the Ninja Turtle stuff, like, he was still doing steady things, but it was all, like, little Mall. parts here and there, it seems, and now, like, it seems like he's starting to pick it back up again. Yeah. Well, I guess we should talk about why this movie is so bad. <laughs> Let's talk about the basic premise. Basically, it's um, this these two guys that are stockbrokers. One's played by Josh Peck, the other's played by Brian Garrity. And the character that Brian Garrity plays goes to ask out this this woman that works in their office that is like, this is their last day at the office, so he asks her out. Well, she he ends up giving her a ride home. What's that? What, I said, wouldn't you know it? And in the beginning, Which, you say, it's her last day. They don't even say oh, of course. last day at work. So, of course, there's like a re there's like foreshadowing right there that this... Oh, yeah. It's the most obvious, like, freaking, like, punch you in the face foreshadowing it could possibly be. Um... So anyway, like they, they, I mean, they show the dead body in the friggin' literally the first scene of the movie. So and then it, like it's like a flashback the rest of the movie basically. Um, you just don't see who's in the body bag, but it, like then they show it. It's the identical scene when they friggin' carry her out later in later on. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So basically, like they, they she's gonna she's gonna drive her home, and um. And then Josh Peck it wants to be a third wheel for some reason, and like like Mooch is a ride home also. And then they decide they're going to stop for pizza, but they don't have cash to stop to buy pizza. So the, instead of just going to the pizza place, which I'm sure has an ATM in it, they decide to go to an ATM that's like built in this little booth in the middle of a parking lot with nothing around but a Christmas tree like shop, like. Like, not an actual Christmas tree shop like the store, like, like literally just a lot that sells Christmas trees. And there's no, it's like three in the morning, so there's no one around. And so they go in, first of all, they park like a mile away from the ATM for unexplainable reasons, except for the fact that they needed, you know, some reason for the killer to actually be scary and able to trap them. And then Josh Peck goes, runs in, and then, like, the rest of them run in for stupid reasons. Like, jo Josh Peck says that he needs help with his card, and so Brian Garrity goes to help him, and then uh, Alice Eve, who plays the, the woman, like, gets scared being in the car alone, so she goes, but forgets her phone and her purse and everything. It, it's, like, the it most, like... It, it doesn't, really. It's just the most stupid set of circumstances that these people... 
So you, at this point, you're almost like rooting for the killer because really the, the three like protagonists that you're supposed to be like, you know, oh, I hope they get out. Like, you're like, wow, they deserve to be fucking killed because they're retarded. They're just yeah. stupid. And uh, friggin' what the hell is the guy's name? Um, not Josh Peck, the other poor son of a bitch. Uh, Brian Garrett. Yeah, that guy. He... <laughs> So like the whole freaking so like early in the day like they're fine like like they're they're stockbrokers and like of varying expertise at their job I guess I don't I don't freaking know, um, and like they like in the beginning of the like in the beginning of the movie, like Brian Garrity ends up like he like he gets a call from some like random person, who um he, he gets a call from some random person who is like a client of his and he's like. And he's like, oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, no, yeah, about your 401k, and like the and like, you kind of like get the gist of it because you see like the sadness get in his face because the guy feels bad because like he's apparently a really crappy stockbroker and he like lost this guy's whole 401k. So like, at some point, like later in the movie, he like tries to jump to a random conclusion that like. The killer is the guy who he was on the phone with earlier in the night. Yeah, yeah. The killer somehow like tracked him down in the like five hours between that phone call and and them being trapped in the ATM. Like, yeah. Which there's never any like there, there's never any indication of that. It's just like it's just no stupid. You like this is just this. It, it, there's this in addition to all the other like crap that you've caused. So th th so this is basically like. Karma, I guess. I don't. I don't know. I guess, but it's just a really weird freaking movie. I, they just act so weird. So, like the when the the the, the quote unquote the killer final like first shows up, he's just the guy standing outside the ATM, just standing there, and they're like all afraid to leave. And it's like, oh, like first of all, like he I don't know, you would do like anything. he's just he just literally stands there. The ATM. Yeah, so they don't go out. Like, they could have all just left, literally walked out the door right there, but they don't. They're, like, afraid the guy's going to rob them or something. Meanwhile, they're all, like, stockbrokers, and, and, like, I'm sure that their AT, I'm sure that all their money, it's, like, fine, and I'm sure that, like, all, I'm sure that whatever bank that they have it in is, like, FDIC insured, because it has to be. So, let's just say, worst case scenario, the guy showed up to rob them, like, They'd still have all of their money the next day when they reported it. Like the bank would, ins the bank would federally insure it, or like if they're Canadian, whatever the Canadian federal bank is. I'm sure that they have. No, I think the, I think they're supposed to be in in Chicago or something. Probably. But or Illinois, because they have an Illinois license plate. All right. Yeah. So anyway, wherever the hell they are, I'm sure the bank. Has, it's like I'm sure that the ATM and the bank that they like have their money in. I'm sure that I'm sure that it's like insured. So even if this guy like did try to rob them or he did rob them and they just gave him whatever, like what difference would it make? There's like the money is still going to be there the next day. So I don't think I don't think they're no, I don't think that's the way it works with FDIC. I think well, yeah, FDIC I, only works if the bank them. gets robbed. Oh, is it really? All right. Well, whatever. yeah. It's so, like, if the bank gets robbed, you don't lose your money because you have that bank. So, like, yeah. you know, because that was, like, if you ever seen that movie Heat, that's what they say to, like, the hostages. They're like, you know, we're stealing the bank's money. This is not your money. Your money's insured by the federal government. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, anyway, they it's still a stupid circumstance, though. Like, yeah. they literally, like, even if they assumed they can get robbed, they're two grown men and a woman. I think the three of them together could probably take on one guy. Yeah, I would think so. I, Unless the guy's like a freaking bl like blue belt in Brazilian jiu jitsu or something. Right, and then a, which we never find out anyway. And then a few minutes no. later, he like there's some like there's some idiot like walking his dog in the middle of a parking lot that's like abandoned, um, and the guy like uh, at like three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, like three o'clock in the morning, and like the killer notices him, and the killer kills this guy. So he's the first of like, I guess what is it, four people who die in this movie. Uh, yeah. So, oh, so he's... The yeah, four. One. Nothing happens to the dog, thankfully. So oh, five, because they kill the guy, too, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. They do kill the other guy. Anyway, so uh, at least nothing happens to the dog. So the dog... Is yeah. Fine. The dog makes it out of this one. Um, and it's... 
it just all the only one you're happy for to make out of it honestly yeah i mean i'm fine as long as the dog's okay so so anyway these morons sitting there in the bank now they have something to worry about but meanwhile this whole time they could have ran out of the atm to their car started it and drove away and it, they still right. had enough time to do this or at least one of them would have had enough time to do that to like get in the car start it drive it up front to the atm and the other ones could just run in and would right. be totally fine but no they all just decide to stay there because reasons See, what they should have done is all split up. Whoever's the fastest runner distracts the killer. The other two run for the car, get the car. Then they just run over the killer and get the other guy back in the back seat and then drive away. Like, how hard is that? Right, now normally like, that doesn't... They just no have train movies. of thought at all. Like, they have no train of thought. But normally in other horror movies where they split up, that's like an immediate death sentence to every person on the team. This is the one time where that's the most logical conclusion and they don't do it. Right, they're in a big open parking lot, so like they could literally just run to the car while the guy's chasing the other one, get in the car, and then run over the guy and pick up their friend. Like it's like they would, it, this would all happen within like twenty feet of each other. It's not like they're freaking splitting up in a giant mansion like Scooby Doo, you know? <laughs> it's um, damn sense. It, it's just it's so stupid. So the the three, you know, again, the, the three biggest winners of the Darwin Award ever. Now they they none of them have a phone that works because the one guy's phone is dead. The other guy lost his phone at a party, and then the woman's phone is left in the car because she's an idiot and forgot her purse. So they're they're basically trapped in this ATM now. Say love you. <laughs> now, meanwhile, they're they're all trapped in this ATM. The guy's just standing outside, and then he goes around. He goes to the car, takes out some tools that are somehow randomly in the guy's car in in the trunk. And starts working in the back of the ATM. You don't really know what he's doing most of it. It's just, he's just, like, doing stuff back there. And the three idiots are trying their best to, like, friggin' somehow set an alarm off or do something. But, like, like nothing works. They're trying to works. break the ATM and they, like, can't do it because they're too weak. And, and then the guy cuts the heat, so they're cold. Ideas. Well, then the guy cuts the heat, so they're all cold, right? And they're all like, oh my god, we're going to freeze to death. And it's like, no, you're actually not going to freeze to death. You could yeah, literally stay wearing, in that ATM all night and be fine. Yeah, they're all wearing jackets, so yeah. they'd be totally fine if they just waited it out. Or if they yep. cuddle together, it's like, it's the three of them. So, then they, this like, they write, like, help on, the, and the, the, meanwhile, they're, like, having, like, a friggin' existential quandary, and they're all, like, going crazy because they're stuck in the ATM, and they're scared, they don't want to die, but, like, again, meanwhile, if they had, like, the slightest bit of common sense, they could easily avoid this. I mean, listen, horror movie victims are always pretty dumb, and they do stupid things, but this is, like, beyond, this takes like, the yeah, it really is. The, the, the stupid, the three stupidest people in the history of mankind. Um, so really the killer's doing everybody a favor by taking them out of the gene pool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the freaking woman writes help with, well, first the, the one guy, Brian Garrity tries to like, they, they try to like give him money and then earrings and a watch. And it's like, it's worth like altogether, like probably like a thousand dollars. Like he gives him $500 cash, these stupid earrings and the, and, and Josh Peck's watch. It's and like, he, okay. Like, he like throws it at the guy too. Yeah. So the guy just takes the envelope and puts it in the trunk of the car. <laughs> and meanwhile, Brian Garrity thinks he's going to, like, run to the car right now and, like, try to start it. But, of course, the killer already disabled the car by ripping out the ignition. So, you know, that's, that you know, a completely moot point. Yeah. <laughs> so then he tries to get her phone. And, of course, he's, like, instead of, like, oh, I got the phone, let me run back to the ATM where it's safe. He tries to make the phone call in the car. Of course, the killer is already on him at this point, breaks the window open, and drags him out of the car. He then proceeds to drop the phone and run away. And, and at this point, he's also lost his jacket because the killer ripped it off of him. So now he's got only his shirt on, no phone, <laughs> and uh, he, he, he goes back basically to the, to the ATM thing to lick his wounds. I mean, at this point, he's asking for it. If, I mean, basically... So then the woman puts help on with her lipstick on on the glass, and they all kind of just stand around. 
Meanwhile, the killer's still working in the back of the thing, trying to figure out, you know, what to do. The killer takes Finally! The phone What's that? The killer takes the phone to... Yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're basically trapped with no, nothing, nothing to... Yeah, they, they have nothing. They're just screwed. So then this, like, security guard comes by with, like, drives by in his car, sees the help, and decides to come close. Now, he gets out of his car, and this is another st so stupid, this part. Security guard gets out of his car, like, again, like a mile away from the ATM, starts walking towards the ATM, and he's calling to them, and they can't hear each other because apparently now all of a sudden there's a wind. There's, like, an icy wind that wasn't there before. And now all of a sudden they can't hear him because it's too windy. So the killer, of course, like, kills the security guard guy, like, just beats him to death with a tire iron. And at this point... Oh, oh, we forgot to mention, a dude comes in wearing the same jacket as the killer, so they kill him indiscriminately. Thinking and he is the killer. Thinking he's the killer, and realize later that he's not the killer, he's just some random dude, because the killer shows up again outside. So they basically kill this random dude. And, and now at this point, you would think, oh, well, we killed this random dude, why don't we just try to gang up on the killer, because we could probably win, because we already killed this one dude, right? right. And no. the one guy was of similar build, too. Yes. Yeah, he, they probably could have, at this point, taken on the killer. Unless, again, that he's, like, secretly a friggin' Brazilian jiu-jitsu master. Um, but they don't do that. So then the security guard shows up, and the security guard gets killed, and Josh Peck decides this is the after stealing the dead guy's coat, the guy that they just killed, decides this is the part where he's going to try to finally make a break for it. Well, at this point, they've given the killer so much time to set up that he set a trap and he put a wire across the parking lot. So Josh Peck goes and he gets himself clotheslined. And he falls on his ass. And the killer comes and stabs him with a screwdriver. <laughs> As one so often does when using a screwdriver. Yeah. So they think Josh Peck is dead. They're pretty much resigned themselves to their fate at this point because they don't know what they're going to do, how to get out of this situation. Then the killer decides he wants to stop. He wants to, like, you know, step it up a little bit. And, and, and you know, he's, he's wasting his time out here now. So he breaks open the back and shoves a fire hose in the back and starts filling the, the ATM booth with water. Um, this is after he put the car in front of the, the door so they can't escape at all now. Where the fire hose so, came from, we have no idea. Uh, well, it's from the Christmas tree shop, I guess. It's for watering the Christmas trees, but somehow it's it's not co it's not cold enough that the fire hose is like frozen solid at this point. You can still use it. Okay. So, oh, they also get Josh Peck back because he's secretly actually alive. He doesn't actually die, so they run out and get him, and they bring him back. And then the killer starts filling the thing with water, so they're all trapped. Josh Peck's but dying. But this there's also, but the other thing is the. The security guard who came by to investigate drove by in his car, in his, like, squad car, or his, like, yeah. security guard car, which has not been tampered with by the killer, so... Right. So they have another window to just basically, like, GTA the freaking car and then drive to a precinct and explain to them what the hell happened. And they still don't do it. They don't do it, of course not. Meanwhile, and so, enough so they get... go out there, grab Josh Peck, who's, like near death and they like drag him into back into the ATM which, <laughs> like as they pass the car that they could have just gone in and drove everybody back in right because the killer had no idea what was happening at this point he was on the he was on the back side of the ATM they literally right. could have escaped and the front door of the squad car is open so yes the easiest escape that they possibly have he's still in the addition probably don't do it like at this point <laughs> <laughs> they have to die. Yes. It is God's will. They have to die. So, the killer starts filling the thing with water. Josh Peck dies because he's friggin' literally bleeding to death. And they try to put bank slips on the friggin' open gushing wound. Yeah, so like, like as, 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 like, makeshift gauze. Yeah, as if that's gonna do anything. Meanwhile, the friggin' woman is wearing a coat they could literally just take off and use as a cloth. and Or, like, rip her sleeve or something. To use as like a, a makeshift gauze, but no, they decide to put bank things on them, bank friggin' slips, deposit slips. So then, <laughs> they get this brilliant idea that they have to escape. So the only way to escape is to, which they find a lighter that they apparently 
they couldn't find a lighter in the beginning, and now all of a sudden they have a lighter for no friggin' reason that anybody I knows. Was, I think it was on the dead guy's jacket by hack by happenstance. Okay, so they didn't check this right when they killed the dead guy. They just immediately decided, oh, you know, we're gonna find a lighter out of nowhere. So they're like, their new plan is to to try to light the friggin' the the sprinkler system on on fire so that it actually goes, and then the fire alarm sounds as water is filling up in this. Well. Right, so they're going to fill up the place faster because now they want the sprinklers on. Well, and also, the, the, uh, Brian Garrity's going around grabbing all all of the the bank slips with his wet, like soaking wet hands and sloshing water everywhere because there's like two feet of water in the in the this place now at this point. And so it's like, well, you're sloshing all over your fuel for your fire that you want to make to start start in a garbage can so you can like get out of there. So then th- th- they get the, the ultimate stupid idea, because neither of them can reach the fire thing by standing on, like, the little tables. So instead of just, like, you know, boosting up, like, he could just, like, pick her up by her legs and, like, boost her up. He decides to put her, her on his shoulders to, to so that she's high enough to the ceiling to put the fire next to the, the sprinkler and, and set off the alarm. Well, of course, this jackass slips, she falls, and falls through the plastic table thing, and somehow instantly dies. And Brian Garrity's stuck now in the middle of the friggin' thing with the fire alarm going off with two dead friends, and he's screwed. He's so then the killer... He's just holding his pea shit in his hand at this point. Yeah. So then finally the killer decides to ram the security guard car through the other car and break through the glass, and, and like, so he could finally just finish this. And instead of, like, okay, finally accepting his fate, he decides he's going to make a Molotov cocktail out of the bottle of alcohol that Josh Peck had the entire time, and they literally could have done the entire time. <laughs> yeah, and, like, that's, that's all that they would have needed to do to, like, to set the sprinkler off. Right. In the very beginning. But they, they're stupid. The stupidest people ever to be cornered by a serial killer. So he throws the Molotov cocktail, what he thinks is the killer. Of course, it turns out to be the security guard's dead body sitting in a chair because the killer just set it up that way. And, you know, so the, the Molotov cocktail doesn't do anything. The killer sees him. He's about to come after him. But then the cops show up and they see all the carnage and the dead bodies. And they assume that Brian Garrity killed everybody. They don't even do any investigation. They immediately just put him in handcuffs and just assume he's the bad guy. It's basically and then we, the South Park police. Where yeah. They show up. They just like they draw like guns drawn at whoever's there, and, and like they just assume that ever that like all of the evidence is right there, so like they don't have to do anything, a- anything at all. Meanwhile, the worst forensic guy in the world, whoever the worst forensic expert in the world is, could have determined that this guy clear this scrawny guy who was maybe 120 pounds soaking wet was totally incapable of doing all of this. Yes. Also. The footage from the actual ATM that only has the certain radius of the box, which is only the inside of the ATM, the killer being on the outside the whole time, they're never able to see that anybody else is involved in this, and they just look like three crazy people that, like, magically get cabin fever inside of this ATM, and one ends up ki- and they end up killing one some random person and then each other. Yeah. So they basically just like take the guy away to jail and he turns around and there's like other people like that are dressed in similar parkas that he knows that he assumes one of them is the killer. And we don't know what happens to this guy, but basically the worst cops in the world end up like booking this poor son of a bitch. Yeah. And then it goes to some like little views of the killer going back to his like secret hidey hole that he has in his storage locker. And he's like planning his next strike on another ATM, you know, and it, 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 at this point, it's like, okay, he's obviously a serial killer. So the cops would know that they're looking for a serial killer who kills people at an ATM and unless sets it up the, like that. Unless this but is they the just first one. Well, no, I mean, it's assumed in the beginning because he's doing the planning in the beginning, too. Oh, uh, yeah, we do see like little bits of the planning as the credits are, as the opening credits roll. Right, and then, you know, even if he wasn't, that was the first one, he's going to do more, clearly, because he's planning more. And that would immediately, like, like disqualify this Brian Garrity from being the murderer. 
but I guess that doesn't matter because he's, you know, the worst, it's the worst friggin' police force in the history. And it's just state police. They don't even know what they are. It's just generic state police. I guess they couldn't get the rights to the Illinois State Police or something like that. So maybe the, the police guards just say state police. Maybe Illinois was just embarrassed about this whole movie and they were like, yeah, we don't want anything to do with this. Yeah, probably. Um, so, I mean, it, the sad thing is that it's an interesting premise that really could have worked. But, you know, someone brought up in one of the IMD reviews. IMDB reviews I was reading before that it's basically like taking a movie like Phone Booth and making it really bad because I don't know if, if anybody's ever seen Phone Booth it's a pretty good movie like it's a good like hostage situation movie and it's got like I don't particularly like Colin Farrell but I do like that movie yeah um but it's like taking that and making it really bad and like not make any sense and also making the characters like completely unlikable like you know, Colin Farrell at least has, a, like, kind of, like, a redemption arc in the end of Phone Booth, you know? As opposed to these idiots who just die, which maybe that's better for the world, again, if they, you know? Oh, well, except for Brian Garrity, who gets framed and put in jail for the rest of his life for yeah. murdering his two friends. the poor guy who, like, whose life he ruined by, like, badly investing his 401k plan. Like, what happens to that guy? I, maybe that guy really was the killer. I want to know his story. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, is that, like, we barely have any character development, and, like, I don't know if they were trying to set it up for a sequel with the little, they have, like, a kind of, like, a middle credit scene where the guy, like I said, is, like, planning more attacks, and, but there's no, like, explanation for it at all. He's well, just th sitting there, like, drawing charts and graphs and maps, and... Well, also, one of the ATMs that, like, there's two ATMs in, like, this particular place that he's, like, plotting to, like, do heinous deeds again... Mm -hmm. And like so, like one of so, like on one of the charts, it says like ATM, and then like it like zooms in on the other one, and it says ATM two, where it's supposed to be like, oh, they're gonna set up a sequel, and it's like, yeah, this is it, there's no way in hell this is gonna get a sequel. It's just no, it's just so bad. And I mean, it was the director's f like first and only feature film, so <laughs> he tried. He he did try. I will say he did try. Unless he was trying to do a producer's thing and try to make more with a flop than he would with a hit. Then Maybe he, he was. Then he might have succeeded. I mean, how does a movie with a $3 million budget fail so spectacularly? Like, that should have been easy for... I mean, like, yeah, it's a low-budget horror movie, but, like, low-budget horror movies have their niche, and they, they can make some money. And yeah. this failed and made no money, basically. It cost them money. So I wouldn't be, that's probably why he's never done another, you know, they've never given him the directing reins again. Probably. <laughs> His movie just failed so spectacularly. It has 12% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which is pretty abysmal for right, those who know Rotten. This is apparently a Christmas yeah. movie, too. But, like, this is, it's, oh. it's just not good. Like, the dialogue is just, like, that, one of the worst things about the movie is the dialogue. because oh, just, It's so, so it's bad. So, it's just very awkward dialogue. Like the, yeah, it's not real pe things where people like, say. Yeah, that like that's really the problem with it. Is like the acting, I guess, is as good as it could be, which is still pretty damn terrible. But mm -hmm. they have like nothing to work with in this dialogue. It's just, it's just totally, it's just very atrocious. Like for example, here is some interesting quotes. Go talk to her. I can't. Why can't you? Because I left my balls at home. No, not again. Yep, left him right there on the dresser. Right next to your nightgown? Yeah, right next to it. In fact, it's probably covering them, keeping them warm. That's good, like a like a male penguin. Who says that? Yes. And I, I could see kind of like the joke they were trying to do, but then they like just kept going with it, like, and going and going, and it's like, okay, guys, like, we get the joke. It's it's a balls joke, okay? The guy has no balls. Ooh, funny. Like, just, you know, they could have ended it right at the first one. But they just kept going with all these euphemisms, and it's just like, they're like the biggest losers around. Who would talk like that? Like, Who would talk to these people? I don't know. And like when the, like they're they're like freaking at the Christmas party and they're like and Josh Peck is like breaking everyone's balls. It's like the stupidest thing ever. He's like his insults are just so dumb. It's just uh, uh, like 
I don't know. Right, like he's standing around whoever the other people are that they work with, and they're probably and they they all kind of like it's believed to be that he's a popular guy from the movie, but like you can see the expression on the other guy's faces, and they're just like they're just like, oh, not this asshole again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. They don't come. They don't come to the ATM with him, and then like. He doesn't have anywhere to go because clearly they're just like, oh, yeah, we're going to go home. It's where well, I'm going to call it. It's going to be an early night for me. You know, can't can't keep the wife and kids waiting. Meanwhile, I don't know. They probably don't even have a wife and kids. And they probably just said that to him so that they could go do whatever it was that they were going to actually do. And yeah. then, like, that's probably why Josh Peck has nowhere to go. Because he's probably like, oh, it's the office Christmas party. I should go out and hang tonight. So, like. He decides to just go to hang out with this idiot and like and be a third wheel. Right. It's like you can. It's like th this is the thing that I. This is the thing that I would hate it if it happened to me. If like, okay, the girl that I like at work, I find out that she's actually leaving. Like today's her last day. She's leaving the firm, and it's like, oh crap, I have to talk to her now, and like, and and then I I talk to her at the party. It sound. It's like. It's an awkward conversation, but she doesn't not want to hang out with me. So we go hang. So, like, she agrees to hang out with me, but for some stupid reason, right? Half of the reason why I talk to her is because I it's because Josh Peck, this guy who I who like sits next to me and I don't even like him. He just kind of like talks to me because I'm because I'm I'm there. I'm the one who's left. And. He's the one who told me this. So I'm like, okay, cool. So the guy who told me to go talk to her then decides, then like, after knowing that it's going to go well and I'm going to like at least get a chance to like get to know this lady and we're kind of go on a date thing, maybe, I don't know, decides to come along with me as a third wheel and it's just like, dude, what are you doing? Like, I'm doing exactly what you suggested I finally do after all this time, and now you're going to blow it for me? Like, yeah. this guy's just like a total cock blocker. I would, like... He I, is. He's a huge douche. I, like, I would punch this guy in the face. I would be like, no, dude, you're not coming. Like, go hang out with the other dudes that just, like, left. Try to see if you could catch up with him and find out what they're really up to. Or, like, you know... You just took a bottle of, like, alcohol from the Christmas party. Why don't you just go home and get drunk or something? I don't know. Yeah, walk home drunk, you, you fucking <laughs> jackass. Jackass, there's probably something for you to do. Just not here. Yeah. And then, like, and the again, fact that they, again... again but then again, they, I would be Brian Garrity, so I, I, it's already established that I have no balls. So, of course, I let him come with me. They decide that they have to go buy pizza, but they need cash, so... Why don't they just go to the pizza place? Like, 99% of pizza places have an ATM or take credit. Well, like, why do you need cash to buy pizza? Well, also, they're leaving, like, a building in the city that's the Christmas party. Why wouldn't? Why do you even need to get in a car to go get pizza if you're already in the city? Right. Like, yeah, we're driving out to, like, the middle of nowhere. Like, they're not... They're in a the freaking empty lot that they're in. There's no big you, buildings around it. Or even if you need to get an ATM, like you're already in the city, doesn't your you're, do, can't you just go back to your office and just like use the ATM in the building? They like they work yeah. at a financial services firm. There yeah, they're a stockbroker. They definitely have a bank yeah, somewhere in the building. An ATM in there. Yes. So all of this could have been avoided. They just weren't so goddamn stupid. Yeah, they're they're really just the stupidest people ever. And, and at the end, you're happy that the killer killed the wall, well, except for the one guy who gets framed, Brian Yeah, but Brian he got Garrity. away with it, so, and you're kind of like, all right, well, if he's just taking out stupid people, I might, yeah. I might be rooting for this guy. Ugh, it's just, you know, I don't, it's one of those things where it's like, obviously, somebody believed in this movie, because they gave him a budget of $3 million. He didn't just raise that on his own. Right, but and this was this was distributed by IFC Films, which I guess he must have like, he must have tugged on the right heartstring, or he knew somebody or whatever it was, and they were probably like, all right, fine, we'll give you a chance, man, but like, this better be decent, and it wasn't, but they're probably just like, well, we have to try to recoup the money somehow, so this is why you and I had to rent it on friggin' Amazon Prime because yeah, there was no way that we were able to get it for free because. 
well, David Brooks has not paid his debt to society. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's the dialogue really, like, is so stupid. It almost reminds me of, like, the dialogue from, like, Birdemic. But whereas, like, Birdemic had really bad actors that were, like, literally wooden, like, delivering really bad dialogue. This had, like, kind of halfway decent actors. Like, they're at least, like, mid-carders, you know, in terms of acting. Kind of delivering really bad dialogue. So it was, like, you know, they, at least they the actors tried, I guess. Yeah, and, like, clearly they were... You can't put the blame on the actors. No, they, no. It, it was 100%. They had nothing good to work with. No, the writing was terrible, the directing was terrible. Um, I mean, literally the only three actors that actually have, like, somewhat of a career are the, the main three, Brian Garrity, Alice Eve, and Josh Peck. Everybody else in this movie, literally, is, like, basically like a, you know, like a day player or whatever. Like, they, they you know, they just are, like, they're, they're not in big movies. They're just, like, extras or whatever, like, small, small time. So... It, you know, it's like it, they don't even have their own Wikipedia page. It's only the first three, like the, the top built cast. Did this guy um, David Brooks even like work again after this? I, I don't even know. Let's check it out. Hold on, let's see. I mean, I hope he found work eventually, but I, I don't, I don't see any directorial things. Um, it looks like he's found work as a producer and an executive producer. Mostly for All shorts, right. it looks like. All right. And, sm uh, and guess, like smaller independent movies. Yeah, I guess that's something. Yeah, well, at least he did, at least he was still able to do something, but like, you had a shot, you kind of blew it, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it wasn't too good. No. And again, it could have been an interesting concept if it was executed right and if, like, you didn't absolutely despise the main characters. Because, like, they're really not likable in any way. No. And again, I can't blame Josh Peck or Brian Garrity or Alice Eve for that because they've been in other things and not, and not been terrible. Like, Alice Eve was, was the young O in, in Men in Black 3, you know, and she wasn't bad in that, like... It's, and she had a speaking role, so yeah, it was a smaller role, but it was a speaking role. Yeah, I mean, she's like, they're not terrible actors. It's just no, just, they're just it, it was just a terrible everything about else about the movie was just awful. Uh, and uh, who wrote the screenplay? I mean, we're burying the director here, but like, honestly, we're we're like the worst thing about this movie is the dialogue, like even the camera. Chris, is not Chris Sparling. Yeah, this guy Chris Sparling and like some and Ron Tip wrote uh, oh. did the story and storyboarding. I guess I don't I don't know. Well, Chris Sparling is apparently still working. He's still got a bunch of credits uh, as a writer. Well, Ron Tip actually had done. He'd worked on like Trek and Space Jam as like crew and producer. So like this guy kind of worked his way up in things. Uh, doesn't look like Ryan Tip really did anything. Ron Tip, excuse me, he had, doesn't look like he really did anything after. It's like... Space Jam, Shrek. Yeah, what, just, like, look at that resume. Space Jam, Shrek, ATM. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then he did something called Love Square the same year. He died two years after ATM came out. Wait, what? This guy's dead? That's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. Brain cancer. That's... Wow, that's... Terrible. Now I, well, I feel like crap. Well, I guess we won't have to bury him. He's already buried. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. Bad joke. Bad terrible. Joke. <laughs> well, all right, we're fired. Um, <laughs> God. All right. Sorry about that, Ron. Botch. <laughs> what a botch. Wow. Uh, oh, you heard it here first. Well, Ron Tip, I'm sorry you, you, you had brain cancer, but the movie you wrote sucks. That's just, that's all I have to say. You tried, you failed. I hope you should have stuck to Shrek. Okay, yeah. All right, well, sorry, dude. Uh, but yeah, anyway, this other guy, Chris Sparling. Oh, Jesus, this guy looks like a doofus. <laughs> the first thing I thought when I saw him. <laughs> just like, wow, what an asshole. 
is the first thing that like came to mind. Hey, now Chris Sparling's gonna freaking sue us for <laughs> slander for calling him a doofus. He looks like a doofus. He does look like a doofus. Or at least in the opinion of the show, not to defame him in any way, shape, or form. He looks like a doofus. <laughs> But yeah, he's this guy's still doing stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's most recently, uh, I don't know, he's in pre production on two things. It looks like uh mostly smaller, like independent films and stuff. Alright, well that's good. Keep him away from the mainstream. Yeah. Well that's the thing, is that a lot of these like people that worked on this seems like they stuck with like independent films after but like i i i could see why kind of it's like you know it's like they're not good enough to be on raw they have to be busted down back down to nxt for a while like I mean, honestly with like with these credits they might actually be good enough to write for raw I, well yeah i wouldn't be surprised he could be well sparling here could uh you do a crack job on the dialogue <sighs> Next thing you know, Undertaker's returning as dressed as the killer from ATM. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and his new gimmick is just to stand outside the shower stalls. <laughs> <laughs> Intimidatingly. Oh, no. And they just have, like, a whodunit storyline with, like, a locker room, sh like, like a shower, like a locker room shower murder. All right, we've got to stop talking about this because now Vince is really going to do that. He's probably listening right now. He's probably like, oh, that's good. That's good shit, pal. <laughs> I can only imagine this. Yeah, the movie is horrible. It's, it is. It's not good by any standards. I mean, no, Garrity has a terrible mustache in this. Yeah. <laughs> this is not flattering for any of these people here. Oh, he's from your neck of the words. He looks like an out-of-work porn star. Palmer, yeah, he really does. Like, he looks like a kid dressing up as Tom Hardy for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. He's still doing things. He's doing TV. So, yeah. So good for him. He was actually, for, you know, little fun fact toy, he was actually on an episode of The Sopranos uh, in season one where Christopher goes to buy, like, uh, pastries at the bakery, and the oh. guy makes him wait in line, and he shoots him. Well, he's the guy that makes him wait in line that gets shot. Uh, the, the guy behind the counter. So, little fun fact to anybody who likes Sopranos. There you go. Wow. Brian Garrity was in Sopranos before he was in ATM. Yeah, so if you want to see this guy get shot, <laughs> turn, on the, turn on an episode of The Sopranos. If you want to see him, it's something that actually has good writing. <laughs> yeah, episode of The Sopranos. I was actually listening to um, to uh, Mark Maron's podcast today. He had uh, David Chase on there. Uh, oh, nice. To, uh, to promote um, um, Saints in Newark. Yeah. It comes out on Friday. We're not being paid by HBO Max. That would be nice. Um, but we do like The Sopranos. We've even we, we've gone to the house. We've seen The Sopranos house. It's yeah. pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We've never... Go yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I've... I've never gone into satin dolls. But, um, apparent, but like, the, uh, the Gentleman's Club in The Sopranos, the Bada Bing Club, um, for, for those of you who don't know, um, the, the owner of, uh, the real-life strip club from The Sopranos actually was, like, indicted on, like, uh, what was it, like, racketeering charges, like, a few years Yes. Ago? Yeah, he was he was mobbed up. That 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 yes. strip club is actually owned by the mafia. Yes, yes, it is. So uh, you now you know. Yeah, which is probably why it was on the show. I'm sure they you know because uh, there was a lot of mafia guys that were like technical advisors for the show. Uh, I know. I think I think Gandolfini had maybe talked to some mafia guys. I know definitely after the show aired. Like, guys would, like, call Gandolfini and say, like, you know, what a good job he does and stuff like that. And um, I believe the – actually, it was um, in one of the seasons where, where Carmine, the New York boss, tells Tony that, you know, a Don doesn't wear shorts. 
Apparently, that was an actual, like, quote that a, a real, like, New York mobster had said to either David Chase or uh, James Gandolfini. Because, you know, Tony wears shorts so, it, so many times in the earlier episodes, so they decided to actually, you know, put it in the show as, as like, a, you know, a little reference to that. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, cool. But, uh... Any Saints of Newark comes out on Friday, or it'll have come out the past Friday. I don't know when we're going to put this episode in, up. Theaters end on HBO Max, so if yes. you don't want to leave the comfort of your home, you can watch it on HBO Max. Yep, just but, uh, make sure if you wake up this morning, don't get yourself a gun. That's, that's not <laughs> the society. Anyway, good to end on a good note of something good like Sopranos, and let's yes. forget the awful vomit-inducing ATM. Yes. And hopefully never watch it again. I'm never that was that was the yeah. second time that Chris and I have watched this movie. We watched it first like ten years ago when we were like at my house doing rehearsal for our band, and we were just like chilling in my room after we were done rehearsing, and we're like, "Oh, let's watch a horror movie on Netflix." And we're like, "Oh, what's this? ATM?" And it was as awful then as it is now. Yes, we we, we watched this out of morbid curiosity because we saw because we saw the name Josh Peck, and we were like. This can't be, like, the Drake and Josh Josh. Yeah. I remember, like, just us watching the movie, and the first thing that came to mind was, like, before we even said, okay, this is terrible, the first thing we said it was, wow, he lost a lot of weight. And then I think after that, <laughs> like, yeah, this movie sucks. Yeah. I think when we watched it the first time, I don't even ever remember watching those end credit scenes, so I, I'm pretty sure we just skipped... Like, as soon as it was over, we just shut it off. We're like, all right, this is I, awful. I think we did, and we probably went and played Nintendo 64 or something. Yep. Something to, so. to, to purge our minds. Yeah. I wish I could purge my mind again, because yes. it's now fresh in my memory. So. Well, if you need to, I've got a bottle of Screwball. That's my power to black <laughs> sheet. Screwball, peanut butter, whiskey. Yeah, we're not sponsored by them either. Yeah, yeah we gotta get a sponsor. It's my favorite like, whiskey. So you know, it's it's great in co it's great in your morning coffee. It's great with Coke. I know peanut butter whiskey sounds. I, I like them both by themselves, but together, I don't know. But they're awesome. Trust me, you gotta you gotta have this drink. It's it's a, uh, it's becoming the it's becoming the like, more of like, it's it's not so much of a secret anymore, but it is quite delicious. Also makes a great Christmas and or birthday presents as long as the recipient is of legal drinking age in whatever country you're in. which And not allergic to peanuts. And not allergic to peanuts. That's the second most important thing. So, I mean, I guess if you're in Germany, then, like, the kid could be nine years... Then, like, you know, you could get it for a nine-year-old and you'd be pretty good. <laughs> the legal... Probably not available. It's extremely German. young. Nine. At best. Uh, in most of Europe, it's pretty young, so I'm not surprised. In Greece, I think it's 16. Italy, I think, is 16. Mm. You know, and, and, you know, in Italy, kids drink wine with their parents when they're, like, young, young, because that's just part of their culture, you know? You drink wine with dinner. That's just, you know, what you do when you're an Italian. Yeah. So. No, in Germany, it's, uh, the leaguing, the, it's, um... Beer, wine, and wine-like beverages may not be sold to children and young people under the age of 16. The legal drinking age for spirits is 18. Okay. So this, that makes sense. So this is as of 2020, so maybe this is a newer rule. But secretly, you could probably drink at like, age, at like whatever age. In London, I remember once reading that like the legal drinking age was like five as long as like an adult was present. Oh. Huh. I mean, you gotta you gotta start your kids young if you're like taking them to the pub after like after football every every Saturday. Yeah. Well, it's part of like you know European culture because you know back in the Middle Ages before there was like water purification, if you drank the water, you died. <laughs> so everybody just drank beer or mead or wine. And that's the way it should be. I think things were a little bit more civilized back then, and more people were friends. Well, are you sure about that? <laughs> no, no, of course not. 
<laughs> I'd like to think that, but it's probably not true. No. I would say, despite all of the craziness in the world, we're probably at really the most civilized time in our on our history. Yes. When when the most uncivil when all of the when all of the issues are happening online at like between people who are like thousands of miles away from each other just complaining about something that bothered them that day in unison. Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty damn civil. Yeah. ATM, don't bother watching this goddamn piece of crap. No, it's terrible. Shut it off, burn it, throw it out. Don't ever pay to watch it. If you have to, if you, morbid curiosity gets the best of you and you want to see it, do not pay for it. Pirate it. I'm not saying that. Don't, don't do that. Find it by means that might not be necessarily legal. <laughs> if you and, must at your own consent, but we are not in any way saying that you should do any of these things. No, just don't watch this movie. It's terrible. For legal concerns, we are saying that you do not do any of these things. What you do in your own time, however, that's up to you. That's true. And on that note, Let's get the hell Just, out of here. Yeah. This has been Why Does This Exist. I've been Chris. I've been Rob. It's 11.15 at night. We're going to bed. But Good night, everybody. Remember, question everything. Okay, bye.